The modest appearance of Worcester sauce belies its global bestseller status. It's a crucial ingredient in a Bloody Mary, a cocktail also comprising vodka, tomato juice, and Tabasco. Bloody Mary fans insist on a generous dash of Worcester sauce in the drink, like Jim Panter and Roy Fido in this cocktail bar in Worcester. There's a certain sharpness on the tongue, so when you taste it with the alcohol and the tomato, it brings out this saltiness in the tomato. I enjoy it with the Worcester sauce in there. I think it gives it the kick. It is a Bloody Mary. The sauce gets its name from the town of Worcester, its birthplace, although in many countries, the sauce is known by the name Worcestershire, the surrounding county. The famous cathedral that towers over the rooftops is a testament to Worcester's importance in the Middle Ages, as illustrated in Tudor House, which documents local heritage. Roy Fido is a volunteer there. Worcester is a historic manufacturing town, and whilst we are 30 miles uh, southwest of Birmingham, the Conurbations, Worcester has been known over the years for its engineering and remarkably for the gloving industry. But I like to think Worcester Source and Liam Perrins keeps Worcester on the map. The Worcester City Museum houses a Victorian-style pharmacy, and it was in precisely this kind of setting that the sauce was originally invented in the early 19th century by dispensing chemists John Wheelie Lee and William Henry Perrins. Today, the building houses a travel agent. A nobleman of the county had been travelling abroad and had found a recipe for this wonderful sauce that could be added to food. So he brought the recipe back to Worcester and asked Lee and Perrin's chemist shop to make it for him. They made two batches, gave one to him and kept one for themselves, but they found it to be absolutely disgusting. They put it down in the cellar and some months later tried the sauce again and it had fermented into this wonderful sauce. The sauce rapidly became a bestseller. Eventually, Lee and Perrin's sauce faced competition from other brands. The reputation and popularity of Worcester sauce spread across the world, from Germany to China. But Lee and Perrin's persevered. The factory set up by its makers is still in use to this very day. The essential ingredients are vinegar, molasses, anchovies, and tamarind extract. Um, nowadays, you have to advertise which each ingredients are in there, but the process, how to make the sauce in the factory, has always been a closely guarded secret. And in the past, only three or four people might have known how to do the entire process at any one time. Cookbook author Paul Hartley has compiled a compendium of recipes featuring the sauce. Well, it, it was successful, really, because in the 1830s, when it was f first produced, there were really no other sauces. Nobody made tomato ketchup. They were making sauces in China, but they were mainly fish sauces. So it was the first commercial sauce, the only real good cooking sauce. Like many other aficionados in England, Paul uses the sauce primarily in meat dishes. Here are his tasty-looking breakfast kebabs marinated in Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce goes with most light meals, really. Chicken, salmon, which we'd marinate with lime juice and Worcester sauce. Beautiful with pork. And we do a great breakfast dish, which is king scallops, just gently sautéed in lemon juice and Worcester sauce. The perfect romantic breakfast. Some prefer just a dash for some extra zest, while others pour the sauce on liberally. Worcester sauce is one of England's best-known culinary exports, a regional success story indeed. <laughs> 